Today we'll be talking about the most time-wasting activities that product managers do, which end up costing them a lot of time without yielding much results in their job search. Hey, I'm Shobit Chug. I'm a former Google product manager and CEO and founder of Intentional Product Manager, where we've coached thousands of product managers towards helping them get to their dream role. So I know exactly what we're talking about. I've seen our clients make these mistakes. I've seen many other people make these mistakes. So let's start with number one. In any market, you could be applying to literally thousands of jobs. You might be pursuing something that has a new domain, Maybe it's a new type of company, like you're going from a startup to a Google or a Meta. You're trying to get to a new level of in your product management career. You might be looking to increase the compensation and you could be trying to make multiple transitions at once. But we have what we call a primary shift rule. A primary shift rule means that anytime you're looking to transition into a new job, you should aim to change only one big thing. And you should be clear what that big thing is. You can change a couple of small things, but you cannot change, for example, your domain, the type of company you work for, the level at which you come in, whether you're managing a team or not, your compensation, your industry, everything at the same time. Transitioning is a multi-level process. Think of your ideal role. You might need to make multiple hops to get there. Now, where product managers tend to go wrong is by attempting to make too many transitions simultaneously, often due to a lack of solid job search strategy, they aren't clear on what constitutes a good fit role, how they should position themselves, or how they should even differentiate themselves from other candidates. They also don't know who they should network with, and all of this ends up working against them. So the first mistake product managers make is not having a well thought out cohesive strategy that helps you make the primary transition that you want to make. This is critical because everything else is 100% dependent on having a solid job search strategy. Now related to strategy, you might have a good strategy, but then something else could be costing you and that's the next thing. One major issue is not knowing where to apply or treating each job as completely independent from others. For example, I've seen product managers prepare for each position by researching the interview questions on sites like, you know, Glassdoor, practicing their responses, and then applying. Now, this approach is a huge waste of time because it requires starting from scratch with every new job application. Instead, we recommend what we call a core foundation preparation. Once you have your strategy, you should develop a foundation layer that includes how you, as a product manager, talk about your achievements, how you position yourself, and how you problem solve. We call this the angle of mastery positioning narrative. This approach ensures that you're not wasting time individually preparing for every job, and it allows you to apply to multiple roles more efficiently. You only need to do some company-specific preparation which is a matter of a few hours or a bit more for something you're particularly interested in, all the rest remains the same. These foundations might also include common interview question types, like product design challenges. An example of that question is, how do you build an app for an amusement park? Your ability to answer such questions is part of your general preparation, your foundation, and once you have this down, you can apply to many roles without having to start from scratch all over again. If you're enjoying this content so far, make sure to hit the like and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next video that we put out. The next area where product managers waste a lot of time is applying online. Look, in the 2024 job market, just submitting an application online is mostly a waste of time. Sure, there are occasional successes, like a recent case where a client landed a dream job would double the compensation through an online application. Even better, this person's partner applied for them. They literally said, I'm gonna submit your application. And they got it. But that's the exception. It's not the rule. Most of the time, when a product manager job is posted, it receives thousands of applications. Hiring managers and recruiters don't want to go through all these resumes. 
they might use an applicant tracking system and, and some techniques to try to filter these resumes. But frankly, these systems are way less advanced than people think they are because of regulatory concerns about bias. That's a tough word. English is my second language. So as a result, the hiring manager is left to review a massive number of applications. Instead, what usually happens, this is the reality, hiring managers or recruiters rely on unofficial channels. They focus on the 20 to 30 people who got in front of them through referrals, through direct outreach, or through other methods that we teach in our course, the intentional job search. So let me ask you a question. Would you rather be one of the thousands applying online or one of the 20 people who at least get noticed? It's much more effective to spend your time building a network of supporters at companies, getting referrals, or reaching out directly to hiring managers. This approach is far more effective than applying to 20 jobs online. Now, with applications comes the next biggest area of waste, which is your resume and cover letters. There is a belief out there in the market, and, and a lot of people spread this belief maybe to sell their own coaching services, but it's that you should customize your resume for every job. While this may sound good, it's not the best use of your time. See, in our program, we tell participants to optimize for return on time. Customizing your resume might offer some marginal value, but it's not worth the time compared to other activities that can give you 10 times the return. Instead of customizing res a resume for every job, you should create a few expertly crafted resumes that align with your strategic targets. Typically, it's one to three. So for example, if you're applying to two types of roles, you create two different resumes. Now, this approach is much more efficient than building each resume from scratch. Apparently, my cat wants to say hello to you. At Google, when I was reviewing resumes to shortlist candidates, I never looked at cover letters. Instead, your time is better spent creating a highly visual pitch that you can send to hiring managers, which is what we coach our clients to do. This is likely going to be a lot more engaging, will be actually reviewed, and it might give you an edge as compared to other candidates. To conclude, the job search can be a very time incentive process. So focusing on the activities that will give you the most return on your time is really important. Customizing resumes and writing cover letters are generally not worth the effort. If you got value out of this video so far, you're probably looking for a new job in 2024. Now, I created this entire video that will walk you through exactly step by step what I would do if I was applying in this market. Click the link here to watch it now.